Hello, in this exercise, we will study the control and operation of multi-terminal HVDC grids uh, using the provided Simulink models. Here, we neglect the impedance of the DC link cables uh, for the sake of simplicity. So as always, let's uh, look at the models and uh, open the parameter files. Probably no need to mention by now that uh, we don't need to open this, but it's good to look at the variables. Then we can open the Simulink file. After opening the Simulink file, we can uh, go and look into the workspace and see that the variables are available in workspace, which means that the preload uh, function is, is uh, implemented in Simulink model. And also you can go and check it. Parameter file is also running from the initial function, which means uh, the updated version of parameter file will also be run before starting the simulation. The things that we need to check is to make sure converter 1 is in PQ control mode and converter 2 is in VDCQ control mode. For the rest, we can look at the exercise document. So VDC should be controlled to 1 per unit and the reactive power 0 and also 0 0.5 per unit of active power from converter 1 to converter 2. For that, we need to define the reference values. So for converter 1, which is in PQ control mode, we need to provide the P and Q references. For the reference of active power, we make it a, a step to minus 0 0.5 because of the sign convention of active power flow. Here, we need to make it from AC side to DC side to transfer the power toward converter 2, as it is asked in the exercise. Then we can uh, use these uh, multiplexers to, to make them one signal and name it. Before making a duplicate or uh, making a go-to from these signals, it's always good to do the formatting because when we derive this uh, from from the, the that block the, the format will be copied in the correspondent from block as well so we don't need to do the formatting for the from block the rest we don't need to provide because you can see in vdc control mode it is the uh, vdc ref which is used for pq it is pq ref and uh, also when it is grid forming it is udq ref and we are here in pq control mode so we only provide pq Then for converter 2, we need to provide the, the DEC link reference, which is 1. Uh, we can, you can use a step function and make final value same as the initial value. Then for reactive power, it should be 0. In Simulink, if you don't provide the signal to, to one of the variables, it is considered as 0. But if you want to make sure, you can give the reference value for reactive power equal to 0 for converter 2. After running the model, we can look into the S-codes to see the result. So for example, uh, for the voltage and current, we can look into this scope and by zooming in, we can observe that uh, uh, the current which is flowing in converter 1 is uh, also transferred to converter 2 and the same value of current is flowing uh, for, for both converters. Uh, no need to mention that on the left side is converter 1 and on the right side is the voltage and current of converter 2. If we look at the powers, we can see converter 1 has a negative uh, power flow, which means it is injecting to DC link, and converter 2 is uh, extracting this power from DC link to AC side for keeping the DC link voltage. Also, we can uh, plot uh, reference value of, of the power for converter 1 as well for a better understanding. And also, let's name it to, to know which signal it is. Now if we run it, we can run it from the uh, scope window as well and uh, observe the progress of the model on the on the scope. So here we can see the uh, converter 1 is following the reference value and we see this uh, DC link over voltage which means one of the converters, in, uh, even if you don't know which converter, one of the converters is injecting power to the DC link and the, the other converter which is controlling DC link voltage is extracting the power and bringing back the DC link voltage to the reference value. 
in the next step we are asked to build a three terminal hvdc grid and name the new converter as con3 for that we can simply copy and paste one of the converters and connect it to the dc link uh, just make sure about the polarity positive to positive negative to negative And uh, concerning the references, it is asked that this converter is injecting 0.4 per unit of active power at uh, t equal to 2 seconds. So we do the uh, setting accordingly. So now we have converter 3 as well. It is asked uh, what would be the power flow of converter in HPDC grid. Uh, we expect that in this case also converter uh, 2 is uh, absorbing all of the power injected by this converter as well because converter 1 is controlling its active power and it is injecting uh, power to DC link and converter 2 is reacting to that. When converter 3 is injecting some power to DC link, converter 2 is doing exactly the same and extracting this power from DC link also just to uh, maintain the DC link voltage. Before running the model, we just need to rename the signals. So they are con converted three, so reference values, everything should be converted three. We don't need to change the control mode of this converter because it is also in PQ control mode. Also, let's modify the plotting part of this uh, Simulink model to all to include the converter three in the plot as well. And change everything to uh, converter 3. Now we need to use these signals for plotting. Converter 3 active power. We need two more for reference value and measured value of active power of converter 3. And also connect reactive power. Yeah, do, you can do these things uh, the way you like, or probably you can make it uh, um, more clean or in a bit better. You can you can make a better arrangement probably. Uh, but yeah, the, le, 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 let's make sure that we are plotting everything there, and also we need to change the uh, signal names in the measurement bus. After running the simulation model, we expect that all the injected power from converter 1 and converter 3 are absorbed by converter 2. If you look at the signals, we can see, yes, it is happening. When converter 1 is injecting this power to DC link, converter 2 is reacting by uh, extracting that power. And also, uh, when converter 3 is injecting some power, converter 2 again is absorbing that power. And you can see the uh, the DC link responses and reactive power. Reactive power is zero, but uh, you can think why we have those overshoots on DC link and why one of them is larger than the other one. It is good to also include converter three in the scopes, which is plotting voltage and currents. So for that, we make the uh, layout of a scope such that we have uh, the voltage and current of each converter on one column. Also, let's uh, yeah, change a bit here to also accommodate the signal connection for converter 3 as well. And change the names here. Also, you can uh, you can use this uh, drop down menu to select the signals and uh, you can see that by opening that it is changed to uh, bus 3. Everything looks fine, so we can run the model.
the main thing that uh, we did in this run is we include this uh, voltage and current of converter 3 so now we easily we can see that converter 1 is injecting this current converter 2 is reacting and when converter 3 is also injecting the current converter 2 is reacting to that as well for a better comparison you can make the similar scale on the y-axis of each plot uh, but a, a better way is to use this uh, configuration properties of uh, scope to to set the exact value of uh, y limits for each uh, plot so you can uh, choose the active display and uh, insert the exact value of y limits maximum and minimum Now you can easily compare the amplitude of the currents of three converters as well. Uh, now the next question, is it possible to share the injected power uh, of, from converter three between converter two and converter one? Uh, at the moment, all of the power is absorbed by converter two because it is taking care of the DC link voltage. A solution is to coordinate reference value of active power for converter 1 according to uh, that of the converter 3. For that, we can simply subtract the reference value for active power of converter 3 uh, from converter 1, from the reference value of converter 1, and send this new value for reference of active power to converter 1. Here, I leave it to you to con contemplate and explain why we do subtraction here in the reference values and not uh, addition. Now we expect that when converter 3 is injecting some power, a converter 1 is also reacting to this change because we have coordinated the reference of converter 1 according to the reference of converter 3. So let's run the model and see how does it look like. You can see converter 2 is not actually reacting to the power injection from converter 3. And also the DC link voltage is not experiencing any transient when converter 3 is injecting this power to DC link. Uh, I give you some time to think why it is happening and meanwhile I will change the style of lots so uh, probably it's good to change the reference value line format to dash line so we know that they are reference because there are many signals on display number one so let's change it and meanwhile you can think about the question that i asked probably it is also uh, good to reduce the thickness of its references in general it's, uh, i recommend you to to play with the, all the settings in everywhere everywhere in master or any other software so at least you know uh, which options you have uh, for example probably you have noticed that when you copy the signals to clipboard the colors are not preserved and you can avoid it by uh, simply coming here and click on this option. I think it is good to know what, uh, what options we have in, uh, in the software that we are using. Now we can see that uh, converter 2 is not reacting to the, this change. I hope you have noticed that uh, actually we need to make it half if we want to have the equal shape between these two converters. Uh, now it was uh, full, so so all of the power was uh, taken care by converter one. So and uh, that also explains why the transient on DC link was not visible uh, when converter three is injecting power. Now with this change, if uh, we look at the signals, we can see that uh, converter 1 is reacting now and it is absorbing 0 0.2 per unit of this power and converter uh, 1 is also taking care of the rest, which is the uh, 0 0.2. Uh, 
actually to be accurate we should say that uh, converter one is uh, absorbing 0.2 per unit of this injected power and the converter two is taking care of the rest of the power which is 0.2 also in this case because we wanted to share it equally if it was 0.1 for converter one uh, the rest would be convert would be uh, extracted by converter 2 which is in VDC control mode. Also in this case we see some transient in DC link and reactive power is zero because the set point is zero. We see some transient in reactive powers also because of the interactions between control loops. Also we can take a we can look at the, the currents and see the impact of this arrangement on the currents. In the next part, we are asked what if uh, the control mode of converter 2 was in VDCP. We don't expect any change in power flow because it's still converter 1 and converter 2 are in PQ control mode, which means that they try to follow their active power references. And converter 2 is the only converter which uh, uh, controls DC link voltage. So we expect that again all of the power is uh, absorbed by converter 2. The only difference is on the DC link voltage. In this case it is in droop and uh, as soon as the, the converter 2 is experiencing some deviation between the reference value of its power which is zero because we haven't provided and this is considered zero. Uh, when converter 2 is experiencing this deviation it will be reflected on the DC link voltage. So we will experience some deviation on the DC link voltage. You can uh, look at, uh, look into the model and see uh, this group control. The naming that we are using in this course and also in this exercise uh, for droops is that we name it based on the input and output to the uh, droop. So when we say VDCP, it means that the, we have the VDC measurement and ref reference values, then we have droop gain, and the output is the power, or to be more accurate, the deviation in power. And uh, that explains well, why we see this deviation in uh, DC link voltage. Now let's uh, test it for equal sharing of power between converter 1 and converter 2 uh, by coordinating the reference power of converter 1. Now we can see uh, two, 0, 2 per unit is absorbed by converter 1 and 0 2 per unit by converter 2. Apart from this power flow which is now shared between converter 1 and converter 2, uh, the final value of DC link voltage is also changed uh, and uh, it is uh, closer to 1. I leave it to you to, uh, to think about it and uh, explain why it is like that. So let's assume that this uh, 0 0.5 per unit of active power is our default value for power flow in this system and uh, we don't want to experience any deviation in DC link when 0 0.5 per unit of active power is flowing from converter 1 to converter 2 uh, for that we need to provide this value for the reference of converter 2 as well so now the uh, reference value of converter 2 is always 0 0.5 per unit in this case, if you look at the signals, we can see that when active power of converter 2 is 0 0.5 per unit, we don't see any deviation in DC link voltage uh, because uh, there is no mismatch between the reference and the measured value of power in this converter. While when we have uh, no power flow at the beginning, we can see that there is a voltage drop on the DC link and uh, also when uh, the power, power of converter 2 is larger than 0 0.5, we see that the steady state value of uh, DC link voltage is increased. In the next part, we are asked to change the control mode of converter 1 and converter 2 to VDCP droop. 
So both of them in this case will be in group uh, control mode. Now let's uh, remove this uh, change in the power for both converter one and converter two uh, to, to simplify it, but we need to provide the reference value for DC link voltage uh, to converter one as well, because it is now in VDCP group control mode. After running the simulation, we can see in the scopes that uh, converter one is not following uh, its uh, reference value and uh, it is reaching to the half of it almost. And the converter two is reacting to this uh, power and that is absorbing uh, this amount of power. But to understand uh, this point a bit better, may probably it's better to look into the uh, principle of the controller. Uh, so let's go a step by step and consider the first part of this uh, result, which is, uh, for example, uh, let's assume uh, t equal to 0 0.5 seconds. Uh, at this point, we see uh, active power is 0 and DC link voltage is 1. So let's say why it's uh, happening. For that, we need to take into account that uh, uh, during this time, the reference value of converter 2 is 0 because we haven't connected anything to it. And uh, also DC link uh, uh, voltage references are 1. So the reference for DC link voltage is 1. Uh, and uh, the reference value for active power of converter 1 is 0 at the beginning because the step time is at uh, t equal to 1 second. And we already said that uh, for converter 2 it is 0. The group gains are, uh, the default value on the model is 10. Based on these values, we can consider the diagram of converter one and converter two with the, the with their group control. Uh, one solution is to uh, try to look at it from the graph. Personally, I prefer to consider this uh, a control diagram of the group controllers. Can say that uh, this is how the VDCP group controller looks like. So we have a VDC measurement, VDC reference, and there is a group gain uh, in front of both of them. And we have the reference and measured value of active power. All of them are summing up together and going to PI controller. A similar case is for converter 2. Now we can uh, substitute the values that we saw in, on the model. For example, the group gains is 10. Uh, we don't know the, the DC link voltage, but we know that uh, VDC of the converter 1 and converter 2 is exactly the same. Uh, if we neglect uh, the, uh, the voltage drop on DC link that we are doing here, actually. And uh, also the uh, reference value for DC link voltage is 1. Uh, reference for active power is 0. And we have uh, unknown value of for P1 and uh, the unknown value for P2 also. But we know that the P2 is equal to minus P1 because of the uh, power flow direction. Uh, the other point is that we know during a steady state, the input to PI controller should be zero. So we can derive these two equations for converter one and converter two. By solving this equation, we can see that uh, it gives VDC equal to 1 and the active power equal to 0, which is the values that we saw on the scope. So now we know why we have active power of 0 and the DC link voltage of 1 per unit. We can do the same for the second part of this result. In this case, the reference value for, act for, the reference value for active power of converter 1 is minus 0 0.5 and the rest are the same. So we just need to change the reference value for active power of converter one to minus 0 0.5 and uh, again write the equations because we know that the input to PI controller because of the integrator of this controller should be equal to zero uh, during a steady state. And uh, also we can write the equation for converter two as well. Uh, solving these two equations leads to VDC equal to 1.025 and also uh, minus 0.25 per unit of active power for converter one. Uh, here we can see in the result that the DC link voltage is equal to the value we obtained and also the power of uh, 
converter 1 is equal to the value that we obtain by solving the equation. The active power of converter 2 is equal to negative of converter 1 active power. Now we reach to the last part. Also, you can look at the reactive power. Reactive power is zero, but in this case, in the last part, uh, we see converter 3 is injecting some power uh, to the uh, DC grid, and we see the changes that which happens uh, on the active power and DC link voltages. Similar to previous case, we can uh, do the analysis. The only difference in this case is that we don't know the value of uh, uh, active power for converter 2, so it is not equal to minus P1 because there are some active power injection from converter 3 as well. So the equations uh, for converter 1 and converter 2 uh, will be uh, similar to previous cases, except that here we, don't, we have uh, one additional unknown variable, which is P2. But at the same time, we have uh, one additional uh, equation uh, if you consider the power flow direction for converter 1 and converter 2, we can uh, see that uh, for, for this system, P1 plus P2 based on the direction of positive values is equal to delta P, which is 0.4 per unit. Solving these uh, three equations, we can obtain the, these values for uh, DC link voltage, uh, active power of converter 1 and converter 2. Now, if we look into the uh, simulation result, we can see that DC link voltage is equal to what we obtained. And this is the active power of converter 1. And finally, the active power for converter 2 is also similar to what we were expecting. In this way, we have now explained uh, the result and uh, why they look like uh, uh, this. But the problem is that the, in the exercise, it is asked to, to make the model such that converter 1 is injecting 0 0.5 per unit of active power into DC link, uh, but uh, it is not behaving like that, and the converter one is not following its set point. What could be the problem here? What do we need to change? If if we fix the problem with converter one, converter two will follow the same active power and extract that power from DC link. So uh, we need to change something in the model to be able to solve this problem. You can use your intuition to, to understand what uh, you can do to solve this problem, but also we can analyze the, the system again and see uh, what should be the reference values of powers in this case. Because now we know that the power flow is uh, 0 0.5 per unit uh, from converter 1 from converter 2, and we need to know how to define the set points of power to reach to these uh, values for active power flow. So by writing the equations and knowing that DC link voltage is same for both of the converters, we, we can define the active power reference for converter two based on these equations. So let's define the correspondent reference value accordingly. minus 0 0.5 plus 1 is equal to 0 0.5. And let's plot the reference value for active power of converter 1 as well uh, in the S-scope and uh, label the signal. Now, if we run the simulink model, we expect that uh, the value of uh, power is 0 0.5 for converter 1 and converter 2 uh, because we did the analysis and we uh, did the assumptions like that. Uh, now, everything looks fine. The, uh, uh, the power of converter 3 is also equally shared between the, these two converters. But what about the DC link voltage? If we look into the DC link voltage, we can see that the steady state deviation in DC link voltage is 2%. But in the exercise, we are asked to 
make it one uh, percent uh, in in the worst case. Worst case is the uh, when all of the injected power is absorbed by one of the converters and not shared between them. I leave it to you to think and uh, explain why it is like that. But for obtaining the appropriate group gain for that, we can either use this uh, BDCP group uh, graph and uh, derive the equation based on that and obtain the appropriate uh, group gains, which is equal to 40 per unit. Or we can again use this uh, control uh, diagram of groups and uh, make the equations and uh, uh, put the re result equal to zero because it is input to a PI controller. By doing this uh, analysis and deriving equation, we, can, we, we will end up uh, with the same equation. Now let's uh, insert the group gain values, which was 40. What do you expect to be the DC lean voltage deviation during a steady state. And uh, maybe it's good to mention that the group is something that uh, we consider during a steady state and uh, not transient. But uh, what is the value? Here you can see it is the 0.5%, which is half of uh, what we designed for. Uh, it is 0.5% because now the power is shared between them. And now you can uh, play with the gains and see what is the impact of changing the group gains. But the worst case is to make one of them uh, zero, so to remove the group. And now all of the power uh, will be absorbed by converter one. So in this case, which is the worst case of uh, uh, power sharing between two converters, we can see now our uh, DC link voltage deviation is 1%. By looking into the power signals, you can see uh, that uh, converter 2 is following its set point and uh, is not reacting to the injection of active power from converter uh, 3, uh, while converter 1 is now absorbing all of the power which is injected by converter 3. And we see this 1% of deviation in DC link voltage. Finally, in this case also, we can do the analysis and uh, solve the equations. We obtain that DC link voltage is 1% and uh, P1 is equal to uh, minus 0.1 per unit of active power. So for equal sharing of the power between these two converters, the group gains should be equal, as we saw. Probably it's a good exercise that you try to analyze it and see why uh, it should be equal for equal power sharing between these two converters. You can use a similar methodology that I used uh, here to answer this question. But to save time and also to make you <laughs> to, to make you to work a bit also, I leave it to you. And finally, in the last part of the exercise, you are asked to uh, consider different combination of uh, control mode for uh, the, these three converters and uh, uh, see what is the impact or which are the feasible cases. I, I recommend that you spend some time on it and uh, analyze this system by taking into account the power sign conversion of converters, which is uh, positive for uh, transferring power from DC link to AC side and also take into account the group controllers so you can consider a DC voltage and powers for converter one and the group gain for this converter and also the group controllers. I recommend that you do the analysis for the different value of group gains for each converter and also uh, for DC link voltage and powers. Uh, that really helps you to understand the impact of uh, each variables and how the system will operate. The good thing is that you have the model and you can verify the result of your analysis uh, using the provided models. So I highly recommend to, to do that, which helps you to grasp the concept of these control principles uh, deeply. Also, I recommend to do the analysis for PVDC group, which means the group gains are on the path of active power uh, instead of DC link voltage, or also you can the, the consider a combination of these groups. So one, one of the converters is in VDCP control loop and the other one is in P 
BDC and so on. The only hints that I can provide is that uh, the this change in the, the group uh, control from VDCP to PVDC will affect the gains of PI controllers as well. Uh, so you should uh, take into account uh, the, these things as well to be able to analyze the system properly. And uh, one thing that I really like about uh, looking into the Drup uh, controllers by considering the uh, control diagram of this controller is uh, that we can easily see the difference between VDCP and PVDC control loops. So they are basically the same and uh, the Drup games is uh, the only thing which is changing. So it can be either on the DC voltage or on the active power. But, uh, apart from that, uh, uh, both of them will do the same task. And that is the end of exercise for module 10. Uh, have a good day.